a graduation address at a private girls' school where the speaker said, things are going to get unimaginably worse and they're never ever going to get better again. <laughs> that was, um, I was given two commencement addresses in my life already and I've never had the courage to say that, even during the Bush administration. <laughs> but, uh, uh, okay. Let me just show you some of the implications of some of the craziness that's happened. The, the fact that the universe is dominated by empty space has driven many people mad. And here's what I mean by this. This is a brief history of time here in this slide. This is just a picture of the density of matter in the universe as the universe expands. The density goes down as the universe expands. The density of matter went over the volume. But the energy of empty space, the energy of empty, empty space remains constant. And if this is the, our universe, we're right now here, a point where the energy of empty space is three times bigger than the energy of matter, a little more than three times, or a little less than three times, but close to the energy of, of matter. And you'll notice something strange. At all earlier times, the energy of matter is much, much bigger than the energy density of empty space. At much later times, the energy density of empty space is much bigger than that of matter. We are living in the only time in the history of the universe when the two are about the same. Why the hell should that be the case? Why? We're not supposed to live in a special time. 14 billion years after the event, nothing special about that. Why should we find ourselves living at such a unique period in the history of the universe? That is a question that physicists have now been grappling with. And one of the answers is the following. This. Galaxies are this. That's been an answer that's proposed. Now, why does that solve the problem? Well, you see, if I were to assume the energy of empty space was maybe 50 times bigger, then it would be up here, not down here, and these two curves would cross at a different time. When would they cross? Here. Well, they would cross at the time galaxies first formed. But I remind you, the energy density of empty space is repulsive. So if it dominated the universe before galaxies formed, then galaxies would form. The repulsive force would beat out the attack force, and no galaxies would form at all. And no galaxies, there means no stars. So maybe this is telling us something. And it's led to something that I call anthropic mania. People say, well, maybe there are many, many universes. Maybe there's just a lot of universes, and in every universe, the energy of empty space is different. Then only in those in which it's not much greater than we see today will galaxies form. And then only then will stars and planets form, and only then will astronomers form. <laughs> so the universe is the way it is because astronomers are here to observe it. Now this sounds ridiculous. It sounds like a tautology, but it's not really. It's very right, actually, if it's true, as disappointing as it may be, for reasons I'm going to, if it's true, it's really just a statement of a kind of cosmic natural selection, like evolution. I mean, bees can tell the color of flowers because if they didn't, they couldn't find the honey and they wouldn't survive, right? So we live in a universe in which we can live because if we were living in another universe, we wouldn't be able to live. And so it's not surprising that we find out if the universes, if universes are totally variable, that we find ourselves living in a universe that's conducive to our existence. But this is really a profound change, if it's true, because it means that a fundamental parameter of physics is just an environmental accident. Physics becomes an environmental science. Instead of having a fundamental explanation of why the energy of empty space is what it is, it's just an accident. That's an awful possibility because over the last 400 years of science has led us to try and ask, well, suggest that maybe we could try and explain why the universe has to be the way it is. In fact, Einstein expressed it as follows. What really interests me is whether God, and by God he didn't mean God, had any choice in the creation of the universe. What he really means by that is, are the laws of physics valuable? Is there only one possible universe? Or if you, if you, you know, if you twiddle a knob and change one 